So welcome, everybody, um, to Creating Links Between Elders and Youth. Uh, this is a webinar that uh, was, is pretty fun for me to put together because it's something that I know that is very needed and will benefit the community in, in uh, restoring some balance. Uh, before I start, um, I'd like to acknowledge the Algonquin people on whose territory I am as I give this webinar. Um, I pray that uh, my words be strong, clear, and that I communicate this information in a way that it can be used to help communities. I want to give thanks for the opportunity to give this webinar, and I also would like to thank those who are listening. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. So my name is Isabel Obey. I'm president and founder of Native Way Training Services. Uh, we specialize in creating and adapting, delivering education resources for First Nation, Inuit, and Métis people in French and in English. And I'm very happy to uh, let you know that uh, we just finished our first Aboriginal Fitness Certification. Uh, it was a six-day program that includes community mobilization, Aboriginal sport development, and an internationally recognized fitness certification. Um, so this, this is uh, one among many of the projects that we're doing, including these webinars. Um, to put this together, it takes, uh, it, it takes a village. <laughs> so I'd like to invite Agnes Croxford from the Leisure Information Network to, um, to let us know exactly what she's been doing in her partnership in this uh, great project with the webinar. So Agnes? Hi, this is Agnes Crawford from the Leisure Information Network. We're a national nonprofit organization. Um, and our part in this project was redevelopment of the Northern Links website, which I'll be um, demonstrating for you a little later, and to provide the uh, technical support for these uh, webinars. Excellent. And Agnes and her team have been working diligently to update the Northern Links website, which is northernlinks.org. And she'll surely give you a, a beautiful tour later on. I'd like to invite uh, Colin as well to speak. He's from Queen's University. Colin, if you can let us know what uh, your part is. I guess maybe his, uh, his thing isn't working. Um, so I'll speak. Colin is working with Dr. Lucy Levike from Queen's University. And they're working with us to evaluate uh, the benefits of these online webinars in contrast to some of the in-person workshops that we've been giving. Um, I'm sure he'll be able to speak a little bit later on, but I'll also speak for CPRA. CPRA, I've been working with them for two years now. And uh, I, I've, you know, it's been a privilege because we've been able to influence health and recreation in communities across Canada. Um, this whole series is built on the Everybody Gets to Play workshops. And I really hope that you enjoy this one that we're delivering today. I'd like to invite Jennifer Pelty to uh, let us know her wonderful part. Hi, everybody, and welcome. Um, so I just want to go through a few of the logistics for today's webinar. Um, some of you are joining us just uh, by telephone, and others are joining us by webinar um, online format. So first, um, let's go through some, some items for the folks that are joining us online. Um, if you look to the top of your screen right now, you should see an icon with a person raising their hand. So if everybody um, who sees this could just select this icon, and you'll see a drop-down menu once you click on it. Um, at this point, you can select any of those options just to see if it's working for you. And I see some of you are doing that, so that's great. So throughout the presentation, if you want to interact with Isabel using any of these icons, um, you're more than welcome to do so. Or if uh, a question is asked and you would like to uh, respond using any of these icons, please do so. Um, second, you will notice to the bottom right-hand corner, there's a chat box. Um, there's already been some comments made in there by Isabel. Isabel, um, Kelly, Colin, and, and myself. So throughout the presentation, if you'd like to participate um, or contribute using the chat box, you're more than welcome to. Um, as you'll see, that your name will appear. Um, however, um, so you don't need to. So you would just simply click on the um, the empty box at the bottom there, enter your text, and then click the bubble, and it will be sent. 
Um, so for those of you that are joining us uh, via phone um, and online, we do have the option for you to participate by unmuting your lines. So for the ones that are online, you can unmute by just simply selecting the little phone icon at the top of your screen, and that uh, allows you to control whether you are muted or unmuted. And for those of us that are just joining on the telephone line, you can mute and unmute your line by pressing star 6 to mute and pound 6 to unmute. Um, so we just ask that if you do select this option that you be mindful that um, there are sometimes um, background noises that can be distracting. So just um, unless you are sharing at any given time, um, we just ask that you um, pound, or sorry, star six so that your line uh, remains muted. And that's all. So throughout the presentation, if there's any technical difficulties, I will put my email in the chat box. And you did receive um, my email address within your login information. So you can send me a quick email, and I can assist you in any way. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, before we get started, I want to talk to a little bit about how I got this uh, webinar and put it together. Um, this is a combination of some of the teachings and some of the things that I've uh, heard from different elders and community workers. Uh, I also did quite a bit of research on online and uh, talking to different uh, community workers who put together some elder programs. So I hope that you're going to benefit from uh, this training today. Um, so our goals today are elder fitness guidelines. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, what the Canadian Physical Activity Guidelines recommend. We're going to talk about roles of both elders and youth in any uh, intergenerational programs. And we're also going to go over some program ideas. And hopefully they're going to help you get inspired and maybe adapt or create something that's beneficial to your own community. Um, we're also going to talk about the benefits of intergenerational programs. Um, so the format of the session today, we're going to be delivering information with some questions asked through polls. We'll be evaluating the information session afterwards. Uh, there will be some time for open discussion and sharing with participants and some more poll questions. And then there will be a brief tour of the Northern Links website with Agnes. Poll number one. Have you ever created links between elders and youth in a way that benefited your community? So please answer here and we'll be able to see the results. Great, so so far that's, that's wonderful. Perfect. Please rate your general knowledge of creating links between elders and youth in your community. So I think this will make for a great discussion afterwards as we, as we can share what uh, has been done before. Wonderful. So the Canadian Physical Activity Guidelines for older adults 65 years and older say, to achieve health benefits and improve functional abilities, adults 65 years and older should accumulate 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity per week in bouts of 10 minutes or more. It's also beneficial to add muscle and bone strengthening activities using major muscle groups at least two days a week. Those with poor mobility should perform physical activities to enhance balance and prevent falls. More physical activity provides greater health benefits. So in Aboriginal communities, people recognize two types of elders. We have the traditional elders and we have community elders. So traditional elders um, our original descendant of the area, who, <clears throat> who, and they're actively involved in community issues. Um, some of them are also trained in ceremonial uh, um, projects as well. Community elder could be someone who has lived in the area for some time and who is recognized and respected for their community involvement. So while young and old may be on the opposite ends of life, they still share a common bond. The quality of their lives are dependent on the quality of care they receive. They are very dependent on their families and their community. So their physical and mental health rests largely on human interaction. We are who they were, and they are who will be, 
we will become. So this is something that we need to keep in mind when we're caring for our elders because they are examples of who we're going to become. And any infrastructure or program that we start today, we might be benefiting from in the future. So a study from the Harvard School of Public Health found that social engagement could have as much effect on prolonging life as fitness activities. This is very interesting because in our community work, we're able to combine both the physical activity and the social in interaction. So keeping social and busy evokes changes in the brain that protects against cognitive decline. This, in turn, influences physical processes regulated by the brain, such as cellular immunity or mobilizing the body's defense against disease. In 2004, researchers at the University of Michigan concluded that individuals who experienced less cognitive decline were involved in a wider range of relationships and social interactions beyond the family unit. An Environmental Protection Agency report in the United States found that for youth, these programs enhance social skills by improving communication skills, promoting self-esteem, and developing problem-solving abilities. Youth involved in these programs are almost one-third less likely to strike others, 46% less, less likely to initiate drug use, and among minorities, that number increases to 70%. I think everybody would agree that our communities could benefit with more of these programs. A study from the Corporation for National Service in Washington concluded that older adults had a measurable impact on students' reading performances the attitudes about reading, and self-confidence and motivation to reach. Poll number three. So how would you rate your community's current linking of elders and youth? Please take a few minutes and answer. very interested <clears throat> in knowing what the a little high is. So perhaps that person can share afterwards. Excellent. Something unique stems from an intergenerational relationship. The dynamic of that relationship, reciprocal and accepting, gives rise to opportunities for learning, growth, and understanding for both participants. The goal here is to encourage and initiate the intergenerational cultural exchange among Native elders and youth to share skills, language, traditions, customs, and beliefs. How can we make this happen? So like a garden, we need to prepare the soil for planting. So before you start, it's important to take the time to help participants recognize prejudices and attitudes that cause alienation. This means educating youth about aging issues and educating elders about the challenges youth face today. We need to take the time and fine-tune communication skills by educating the elders about common youth expressions. I'm sure that they might not know that something being called sick is actually a good thing, so we might want to let them know. And we need to be teaching the youth what is and isn't acceptable when addressing community and elders. So in order to make this initiative a success, we need to remember a few things. So we need to choreograph schedules to accommodate limits imposed by transportation schedules. Sometimes um, some of our um, elder facilities have certain outings, so we have to respect that. Or sometimes the school has uh, projects or, or uh, events that are going on. We need to remember to check about competing demands and outside factors for both youth and elders. So if, if the weather isn't very good, then that might be a day that we want to reschedule an, an event. So we want to develop meaningful activities that are engaging to both generations. I'm not sure how many elders want to play Xbox, but there might be some. And if it's not fun, then you may lose either participant. So we need to find ways that the knowledge of elders can help youth and vice versa. So you'll therefore be encouraging self-esteem by providing recognition of each participant's offering. So what is the elder's role in this type of program? Well, elders are different from other people in our community. As we know, in the past 40 years, life has changed incredibly with all the technology. So they carry a special link to a past that no longer exists. 
And although it's good for elders to have good knowledge of the culture and tradition of their people, truth is some of them went to residential schools and may have lost some of that knowledge. But what happens is that the residential school story is actually part of the culture and part of the history. And maybe the, the youth would benefit from hearing from them. So regardless of their cultural knowledge, an elder who is willing to share his knowledge or skills by passing it on to the younger generations through the teaching and modeling of these behaviors is a valuable asset to have. So elders convey a spiritual continuity of the past, present, and the future. It's a special ability to apply that knowledge, wisdom, and spirituality to the well-being of the community that makes the elder such an important and unique individual. So we can encourage the elders to interpret the events of today into the cultural framework of the traditions of Aboriginal people through their stories and unique history. Generally speaking, elders are concerned with the well-being of the entire community as well as the well-being of individuals within the community. This is a teaching that is very important to pass down to our children. As we know, we're pretty busy these days and sometimes we forget to have that conversation with our children. So they have this time and they have the, the will and the information to convey that to our youth. So the benefits to the youth, they have a relationship with an older individual and they're not estranged from the aging process. They'll have more appreciation for the rich cultural history of their Aboriginal ancestors as well. By having contact with the senior population, young people don't lose respect for their elders by negatively stereotyping them and youth become more self-confident at contact with the elders. So community elders can also serve as role models to the children in their efforts to explore and build necessary developmental skills for scholastic achievement and self-esteem. Elders can share their rich experiences and their own talents in a wide array of areas. In the process, awareness of the aged improves and attitudes change. So many of the challenges we face can be addressed by bringing young and old together, resulting in mutual, mutual health benefits to both groups. <clears throat> Some of the benefits to the elders, well, these intergenerational programs can provide a sense of linkage to the community. Programs can provide youth with the opportunity to draw on the knowledge and life experience of the seniors within the context of a non-threatening, non-judgmental relationship allowing for a unique interchange between young and old. So that means sometimes we can't share things with our parents. I think we've all experienced it. But if we have a non-personal elder who has a broad perspective, you know, they might feel a little bit safer and be able to you know, give some information that they wouldn't necessarily share with their, their peers or their, their leaders. Intergenerational programs can improve participants' ability to develop strong, caring relationships with the other generation benefiting the whole community circle. Here are some ways that we can link our elders to our youth. Organize free monthly cultural gatherings to, for our elders, youth, and families to share language, traditions, customs, and beliefs. All who are interested in supporting First Nations, Inuit, and Métis ways of life are welcome. Have the youth interview the elders and then write an article about them. They could share it with their school. They could share it with their community. Um, they can share it with their family. Celebrate the spirit of the seasonal solstice or the moon cycle. Make crafts or beadwork together. And they can learn about different traditional holiday celebrations that might not be highlighted today. Teaching the youth some songs and dances while drumming. You know, some, it might be the youth teaching some of the elders or the elders teaching the youth either way. Elder youth interaction activities like board games or cooking traditional food over the fire are also a great idea. So the power of cultures and teachings are in the stories. So throughout Aboriginal culture, storytelling is an integral part of learning lessons in life, offering entertainment and thoughts about creation. Have the elders share some stories and then have the youth create skits or a digital story to present to the elders. They could also present it at school or with other groups or even in the community or even in an urban, urban setting. You can separate youths and elders into groups and then have each group illustrate a story they will present to the community at a gathering. Another program idea would be have some elders come to the classrooms and teach the youth a skill or read a story to the younger kids. Then have the kids 
uh, create a scrapbook or collage about the story, and they can actually present it to the elders after. I was in a, a community in northern Manitoba, and what they did is they had um, elders in every classroom, and uh, it assisted the teachers whenever they needed um, that assistance, and also it helped with the discipline with the young, youth. Have the youth come to the elders and teach them about modern technology. That would be beneficial. Many of them don't know how to use the internet or even understand what the internet is, but if you have the youth showing them something that they know and use on a regular basis, it'll help the elders and it'll also help the youth because they'll feel um, more confident and they'll feel like they've helped somebody. Organize some nature walks where the elders can communicate their knowledge of nature to the kids. Have an outdoor teaching day where youth and elders work together for a common goal. So it could be build a smokehouse, a snare, or some fire teachings. Young women can greatly benefit from the wisdom of the grandmothers when it comes to relationships, their roles as women, and the privilege of their moon time. Every boy needs a man to show him what is expected of him as a family provider. Now, more than ever, our young men need guidance on how to be Aboriginal men in modern times. The possibilities are endless, and I hope that you take the time to look in your community and see all the resources that you have and be inspired by it. Everyone will benefit. So some of the key factors, you want to organize the first few gatherings and then get participants to choose the activities together. You want to be flexible. What may start out as one thing may become something completely different. You want to let the youth take the lead on some activities as well. We want to teach them leadership skills. We want them to feel valued as well. Keep things simple. And remember that the end goal is to give the opportunity for interaction to build relationships. So in the end, we all win. So the elders benefit by experiencing greater involvement in the community. They develop caring relationship with youth, and they experience relief from depression and isolation because they have something to look forward to. It also provides them with an opportunity to share their histories and experiences. They have validation of their lives by influ influencing a future generation. They also get assistance with chores, transportation, and shopping. Playing a mentor role by teaching specific skills is always getting out of the house in some cases and maybe seeing something different than their daily chores. Developing relationships free of role restraints they have as parents or professionals. And they can receive the joys of conversation, touch, and entertainment that comes from regular contact with youth. The youth benefit by exercising community responsibility and good citizenship. It improves self-confidence and self-esteem. They learn practical, vocational, and life skills, and they receive support in dealing with crises involving family, school, and peer groups. Breaking down stereotypes and myths about elders is always a good thing, and learning to know and respect a senior as an individual. They'll learn about psychology and physiology of aging, uh, as well as death, and developing a caring relationship and sharing personal information with an elder. Youth also benefit by having an older advocate to help them gain access to mainstream community. They will feel satisfaction of brightening an older person's life. And it gives them involvement in constructive activity that will, will and can be a deterrent from potent potentially harmful or criminal activities. Strengthening the community circle brings about better health at every level. It keeps structural, uh, cultural, and historical roots strong. It's the way things used to be, and it's what we need to bring back. I've been listening to several elders lately, and they are talking about it being a new time with the seventh generation coming up. It's, um, it's more important for us with the Idle No More and every other initiative that is happening with health and physical activity. We need to start communicating with each other and getting the elder, older generations connected with the youth. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this webinar today and that you've gotten some um, good ideas and hopefully some inspiration. Um, we can actually ha take some time right now to, be, uh, to d discuss and maybe share some of the ideas of the things that you are doing in your community. So if we can unmute some of the lines, I would love to hear from some of the people who answered the polls. 
and the ideas that you're using. Does anybody have a program they'd like to share or an initiative? Hi, Isabel. Yes. Hi, it's Jennifer. I'm just uh, wanting to remind everybody that uh, to unmute your lines, you can select pound six on your phone, um, and then you can share um, any contributions that you may have. Excellent. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. OK. Um, this is DJ Joseph from LC Booktook, New Brunswick. Hi, DJ. How are you? I'm great. Um, and it's. For us here, I'm not sure if um, there's a lot of the same happening in other communities, but there are um, elder-specific like um, programs. There's also uh, something that's new this year is elder-specific um, physical programs. Excellent. There's there's something called Elders on the Move, and oh. they have like the the community gym is reserved. There's specific times that are reserved for them to go in and use the equipment. So. That's it, yeah, the, the the difficulty, or or not the difficulty, but I guess the challenge, is to try and connect mm -hmm. those elder specific um, programs with youth specific programs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. if if there's any sort of, um, and I know it, it seems really simple. I mean, it seems like a simple concept, but it is a little. I don't know. Um, it, it's a bit more difficult than what it. It just seems on the surface. So I'm just wondering if there's any anyone out there who might be able to offer, like, you know, some hints in terms of being able to make that connection. Well, I would personally, thank you for sharing that. Um, get the school involved and make it part of their homework. Um, you know, whether they have to write a report or, you know, interview the elders, uh, you know, contact the teachers and see if you can uh, incorporate that in something that they're already doing. Does anybody else have any other information or ideas? Something that you're already doing that might uh, help DJ? OK. Um, the other thing that I would like to mention is that on the Northern Links uh, website, you could download any program or idea that you may have. Um, there is a form where you can do that, and then they will contact you and take more information, and we can share uh, whatever program that you're, you're developing or any question that you may have so that everybody can contribute and support each other through that. Did anybody else want to share something? Hi. Oh, hi. This is Christine. I just uh, unmuted because I had an um, uh, activity that was done in the past, and then I, right now I work for a national organization, but in the past I worked at an Aboriginal Health Center where we had youth programs and we often did uh, intergenerational activities and um, you know just finding activities that like you had mentioned Isabel you know both uh, groups will will enjoy um, mm -hmm. surprisingly we found you know the the elders the seniors group um, really enjoyed the Nintendo Wii oh, cool. um, so getting you know getting the youth uh, to play that with them was actually quite easy and a really enjoyable experience for everyone. Had fun. Um, you know, they went out to the park. The elders made kites, and then they went and flew them with the kids one time, and that kind of stuff worked really well. Um, and now for the uh, national program that I work in, we do uh, Aboriginal role models. At, um, it's Gen 7 at Motivate Canada. Mm -hmm. And um, we always have, when we're doing our training for our our role models, we always bring um, an elder spiritual advisor uh, to the training so that there is an elder present. Uh, and I'm not, you know, I'm not sure how the uh, role models engage youth, or the elders in the communities. I, I, I think that's something we'd like to look at more when they are running their youth programs to engage the elders more. That sounds great. So how did you bring the youth with the elders for the week? Did they meet at a community center? Did they go to the elders? How did that happen? Uh, it was, uh, you know, often on a PD day or something, there would be, a, the kids program would be scheduled during the day for a special mm -hmm. PD day activity, and that's 
often when the, the elders were there for their programming, so it was just scheduled at the same time. Okay. Or um, Saturdays. Saturdays were often a time where intergenerational programs were scheduled, things like going out to a maple sugar bush where everyone could kind of enjoy the scenery and do things together. Excellent. And who were the, the people organizing this? Uh, uh, youth workers for the center and the, the elder program coordinator. It was kind of all within one one center that it was done, so it was quite easy. But, I, I mean, if it's in a community and you have to make connections between all the various people, I could see that being a bit more, a bit more difficult. But, yeah, making connections between um, various staff is helpful and finding out people's work plans and objectives and then kind of uh, creating common goals between that, I think, is helpful. Okay, that's a good point. So basically, there was community co collaboration to make this happen. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Did anybody else have a question or a comment or want to share something? No, well, it's Janetta. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Janetta. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Busy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, likewise. Uh, so I just wanted to share a couple of notes um, to everybody that's on the call and um, a couple of ideas that I've heard over the years, especially in working, you know, when trying to get elders and youth together, is um, doc I believe it's Dr. Manley Begay, but um, he's from the U.S. and one time he had spoken at an education conference and he was talking about, you know, the connection between youth and elders and so what he said is that he, how he got it to happen was he went to a group of elders and started telling them, you know, our youth are lost, they really need your help and so on and then he went to the youth and said, you know, our elders, they're lonely, they really need somebody to talk to and so just kind of like, you know, identifying that the need and so you know um, both groups just connected through that way mm -hmm. and um, I remember going to the Sundance this last summer so I'm a Blackfoot First Nation I come from the Blood Tribe and um, the picture that you had with the teepee that just reminded me of the scenery out there but um, I remember how there were so many of the helpers that were young, um, whether they were teenagers or youth, um, there was so many, and you know, just taking that interest was so, um, so great to see, um, mm -hmm. especially because you know you had, um, so whenever you're doing, you know, the ceremonies, and you just need those helpers around, mm -hmm. the youth are especially important to continue to carry on our traditions. Mm -hmm. And so we even had people, you know, standing at the beginning of the entrance and just telling them which way to, to drive around in the circle or to park and, you know, just mm -hmm. giving them that role, I think, mm -hmm. is what's really important. And then, um, so within our own program, I know Suzanne is also on the call, but the two of us are, we're trying to um, work on a project or an initiative, rather, that's called Strengthening, um, oh, sharing knowledge, strengthening connections. And what we are trying to do is within the social media framework is to have youth ask questions around sexual health and ask for guidance from elders, traditionalists, and sexual health educators. And um, just because we all know about the high rates of STIs and you know just that loss of connection from the residential school area, things like that, so it's important to get um, that identity back to our youth, and I think it would really help. And so that's one project that we're trying to do, and we're just trying to reach out to communities with that. And so um, if anyone has any ideas or youth groups that you think would be interested, we'd love to, to hear from, from you on that. And uh, we would love to have your programs and everything posted on the Northern Links website as well so that uh, everybody can be aware. And, and uh, you know, it's just a great place. And I, I think you're working on a website as well that uh, shares information, right? Exactly, yep. R yep. Right. So it's so going to be um, in the next coming weeks we'll be launching it. Excellent. So, um, w you know, we'll make sure to keep everybody posted on both resources. And if we can interchange some, some of the information and link it, that would be great. It would benefit way more people. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, no, thank you. Does anybody else have a story, idea, or something to share? Well, 
Uh, it's Agnes here. I just wanted to uh, comment to Janetta. Um, I hope you won't mind if I have someone contact you for more information about that uh, program. And be sure to uh, let us know when your website opens, and we'll be sure to promote it for you on Northern Lights. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll just put my email into the, the chat box right now. Great. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you, Agnes. So I would love to hear from the person who has a lot of uh, high elder um, programs going on. If anybody has something to share, that'd be great. Something that's successful. I was just speaking to one of my participants in uh, the Aboriginal Community Warrior Certification course last week, and he was saying that he had done that several years ago through the, the Friendship Center. and. Um, he said the benefits were incredible between the elders and the youth. The, the, he said the elders had so much more energy after being with the youth, and the youth seemed to be behaving better. So this was a real-life experience. Um, unfortunately, the course, um, as he moved on to uh, another position, um, the, the uh, program um, you know, went, uh, went off the track. But um, uh, you know, as long as we know that these things can work and somebody cares and, and takes the time to, to put it together, I think that uh, the communities and their youth are going to benefit so much more. Did anybody else have something to add? Okay, well, I'm just going to finish in, um, by telling you a bit of a personal story for me. Um, when I was growing up, there were, I had a few um, elderly people in my neighborhood, and my parents couldn't understand it, but, um, you know, oftentimes they couldn't find me, and I would be off walking with them, and I learned so much from them, and I, I find that um, I'm so grateful for uh, just that presence. We didn't really talk about much, but it was just having somebody who was uh, non-judgmental and, and would listen to me rattle off about seeing a chipmunk or something was so beneficial to me. So I, I think that we need to remember that feeling as a child of just having somebody who is uh, non-partial um, being there for ourselves and, and offering that to our, our kids. Um, on that note, I would like to thank everybody for um, participating. Uh, there will be an evaluation after the webinar. And uh, I'd like to invite all of you to come back to how to collaborate with other communities or organizations this webinar will be given on March 26th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you again. So take care. For those of you who are staying on the line for the uh, website tour, I'll ask you to just give us a minute while um, those who aren't staying on uh, disconnect, and then we'll, we'll start the show. Uh, Jennifer, um, unmute all the lines now so people can ask questions as we go along. Absolutely. Okay, so all the lines have been unmuted. So everyone who's who's still online, feel free to ask questions as we um, go through the website. It'll be a very quick one today, but you're always welcome to um, to contact me using uh, either just by email or using uh, one of the forms on the site, which you'll see as we go through. So I just want to express our appreciation to the Pu Public Health Agency of Canada for funding the redevelopment of this site. And um, thanks to Bert Crowfoot, who made uh, all of the fabulous images that are on the site available for us to use. Uh, this is a grassroots site, as uh, Isabel mentioned earlier. We count on you to tell us what you want to see on here and to contribute your own um, success stories and resources and so on to the site. Um, if you take a look at the home page, you'll see that we have a feature area. Right now we're featuring the series of webinars that are happening. Um, but as those webinars uh, wind down, we'll be featuring other resources there. And if you go to the webinars page, you'll see that as each webinar finishes, 
we post um, the recording of the webinar so you can hear and see it um, as it happened. You can also download the Power, just the PowerPoint um, presentation and you can download any handouts that were made available. Also on the home page, uh, you can get an idea of uh, what's been newly added to the site um, just by scrolling down, um, down the page. Um, the latest event, the latest program idea, news item, and resources are featured here. Um, so you can always you can see that the site is updated fairly regularly. Well, quite regularly. We have a news and events section on the site um, where we have people who actually go through online uh, sources of news, press releases, and so on every day, looking for news that would be applicable to people who are working or volunteering in recreation and health promotion and um, posting the articles here. If you have something you want to tell us about, feel free to share it using the, uh, the form on the side of the page there. Similarly for events, um, we post all of the events that we hear about. Um, these are not typically local events. They are events meant for professional development to help you in the work you're doing. And again, if you hear of something and uh, think it should be on here, please let us know. We have a database of resources. Um, the idea of this database is that it uh, has practical resources in it that you um, would use on your job or your volunteer um, uh, activities. You have the choice to choose to look only for Aboriginal resources or for other resources as well. And since today's topic was intergenerational programs, if I uh, enter that as a keyword, you'll see some of the resources we have on here. I would highly recommend some of these. These are excellent um, resources. Uh, one specifically for intergenerational physical activity programs that will tell you what, how to set them up, what are some of the challenges, give you some ideas. Um, there's a little checklist for getting started with a program. There's uh, something on the benefits. There's a, a very extensive toolkit on conducting um, intergenerational programs, which has um, program ideas and activity ideas in it as well. So uh, several good items there for you to use. Um, going back to the, um, to the search page, you see that you can search the database either by a keyword or by a topic. And if you pick a topic like, um, let's see, games and activities, for example, if it has a little book icon beside it, that means that there's a subtopic. So you can choose to either search by the main topic or the subtopic. Traditional games are something that we're particularly interested in collecting and adding to the database. Um, so you see we've made a start here, but we really would like to hear about yours. So again, we've got a form here that you can use to either ask us to help you find things you haven't been able to find or to um, submit something to us. You don't have to give us a lot of information, just some basic information about the game or the program that you are wanting to uh, submit to the database. And then we'll have someone contact you to um, collect the rest of the information from you. You can also see that we've um, connected to a couple of uh, really core resources here the Physical Activity and Sedentary Guidelines for All Age Groups in Canada, and a Recreational Toolkit um, for Rural uh, and Aboriginal Communities that we think would be helpful for you. We have a Success Stories database. This is a database of um, program ideas that you can search by keyword, by an organization name or by the type of facility you have to work in. 
So for example, if I uh, look for walking programs, I will get a fairly detailed description of the program and contact information um, so that if you wanted to contact someone and ask for more details or help about how to actually implement a program in your community, you could make direct contact with these people. Um, there are lots of uh, program ideas in there, so feel free to, uh, to explore it and to tell us about your own programs, of course. This uh, project is connected to Everybody Gets to Play. And this is the one place, I believe, where you can actually download the Community Mobilization Toolkit and the uh, First Nations Supplement to Everybody Gets to Play without paying for them. Uh, if you were to contact CPRA about that, you would actually have to pay for it. But through this initiative, they've agreed to allow us um, to put these resources on the site at no charge. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, the last um, kind of set of resources we have are funding sources. So this is by no means uh, a comprehensive list of um, funding sources that are available. You probably know of many that we're not aware of. But as we hear of new programs, we add them in here. Um, and we try to keep up with uh, any ex uh, deadlines for application and so on, although some of them obviously are, are ongoing. And so we try to keep this up to date and to let you know about them. The final thing I just wanted to mention to you is the um, Sharing Circle Listserv, which I strongly encourage you to subscribe to. You'll get two uh, types of information on this listserv. First of all, we'll update you every week or two weeks about anything that's new on the site, and in particular about any funding opportunities we hear about. And it also provides you the opportunity to ask questions of other people on the listserv, people like you who are working in their own communities. So you can post a question, and um, hopefully someone uh, you know, will be able to help you with your question or add some, uh, some of their own experience to it. And um, we're happy to hear from you. Contact us at any time with questions or suggestions. And um, unless there are some questions now, that would be it for the tour. Any questions at this point? Okay, well thank you for your time today and I hope I'll hear from you in the future.